So I know that there's a lot of differing viewpoints out there about artificial intelligence or AI. I've been working with ChatGPT since the day it came out. I got the notice and I'm like, oh, I need to know more. And I will tell you, regardless of all of the newness of it and the innovations of it and all of the development of it, for us, it has been really beneficial and beneficial in ways that were <laughs> completely unexpected. Um, but since we are talking about business practices, that is personally where I use it the most. We use it the most. However, I also use it for things like um, what is uh, give me a menu for an Italian holiday meal. Give me the um, the recipes and the shopping list, and it does it. And so that has been extraordinarily helpful. I will tell you that for me, so far, I am using ChatGPT. Many of you are aware or maybe not aware that the new voice uh, chat GPT 4.0 is out, and the O stands for Omni because it's omnidirectional. Um, and I've only that just came out last week, and I've only had a little bit of time to play with it. Robin has been able to work with it a little bit more, and it's been fun to watch her husband, Sean, who's you know always ahead of the curve with technology and, and new innovation. So um, anyway, we thought since we are talking about business, we would go ahead and share how we've been using this because it has actually been a tremendous time saver and um, a tremendous, um, I guess, just benefit in a lot of ways. The one thing that I will say with all of it is none of it is something that just gives you everything without you having to check it, without you having to check your resources. Like one time I asked it to, um, you know, give me this information. And then I asked it to give me the citations for the information. It gave me the citations. And then I looked at it and I said, well, are these real? And it said, no, they just look like citations look. And so um, you definitely want to check your work. And also, I would say it can give you some basics, but still, for instance, if I use it for any of the concepts or whatever, you still always have to go back in and rewrite it and make it your own. So it's, you know, it's certainly um, for us, you know, it is a, a basic and not the completion of the information gives us the basics and places to start. But some of the things that, you know, like I would say off the top, one of the first things that we used it for was when we do these kinds of things, and then we talk about the different topics in our distance Reiki share, and then we want to put it on our YouTube channel. We can just put in, here's the topic, give me a good title for it. And we used to spend so much time on titling things. And again, we'll still mess around with it. We still check it out. So it's not like it's just an automatic, oh, here it is. But it gives you good ideas. Um, the same thing with like YouTube descriptions and things like that. So simple things like that, that, you know, they're not, they're not every, it's not, us using its content, it's us uh, letting it help us define our content. So, um, Light, I see that you're saying you have to get going. We we record this. This will be on um, on our YouTube channel and our podcast channel. So, Robin, I really want to let you because she's developed so much expertise in this. Um, that I really want to let turn it over to you okay, and make sure there's enough time for you to talk about it from your perspective. Okay. 
Um, well, so as Colleen said, I would say the, the thing about uh, chat or AI in general is it's not in place of uh, any humanness that it's uh, brought to it. And I will say after using chat, because I, I was with Colleen, I was in the infancy of it. After using chat for a long time, you can kind of start to tell when people, uh, one of the things that I've seen in real estate, for example, is that you can tell when the the descriptions are done through AI. And that's not a judgment. I'm just saying you start to get to be able to read when it's through AI or not. There's a lot of unlocking. There's so that word unlock. Chat uses <laughs> unlock the word everything. <laughs> unlock. I, I said yesterday, for the love of God, stop using the word unlock into it. <laughs> I'm hoping it will learn from me that I do not want them to use the word unlock for the 15th time in one paragraph. So um, that is one of the places that I will say uh, that you do definitely have to check it. You definitely have to go in and really put your um, your voice into it. You can't, from my, our experience is that we can't just directly take it from one to the other. We have to go in and edit. It's not a replacement for any sort of creative writing. We wouldn't um, do our articles that we write through chat, uh, things like that. We wouldn't do through chat. Those are from our perspectives. So there's places like that, that it is not a good replacement. However, I will say that it is so extremely helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and screen share. And really when it comes to chat, the big place is uh, learning how to prompt it. Now prompt it means that this is the directions that you're giving it. So you can see one of the things that I love to use chat for are the creation of ideas because this is a perfect example. Social media. It's not that I can't create my own social media posts. It's what do I post? And, you know, if you're going to get really deep into social media, there's coaches, there's so much theory when it comes to that. However, um, for those of us that are especially just starting out our business, this can be a place that can be really challenging. So my first prompt, which again, when I'm prompting, this is, if you look down here at the bottom of my screen, that is what I'm doing. I'm giving it directions and that's called a prompt. So please give me 10 ideas, right? And I'm going to just go through so that I don't have to go back up into it um, because it does take a while to, to create it. So here I said, please write me 10 ideas to post on social media. And then sure, here's 10 ideas to post. And I realized that, wait, this is just 10 regular ideas. I actually want to change what I'm talking about to Reiki. So I stopped the prompt and um, I changed it. Please give me 10 ideas to post on social media about Reiki. So then you can see here, here's 10 social media ideas centered around Reiki. So daily Reiki principle, Reiki meditation, personal Reiki story, and it goes on. But that's actually not what I wanted. So then I told it, I don't want the post. I just want the ideas. So here's where you can tell it what you do and don't want. Um, so here are 10 ideas for social media um, posts about Reiki. So share daily Reiki principles and invite followers to reflect on it so that I can go in and I can make that my own just for today. I will be grateful. And I can talk about my gratitude practice or the gratitude practice that I've seen helpful for others, what Reiki has taught me about gratitude. There's all of these things that from there, I can make a post for myself. Maybe I can, uh, you know, grab a quote about gratitude and put it on there. Um, so you can see here, here are the ideas that uh, it can generate for you so that you can have ideas for posts on social media. I think for most people, that is where, you, especially starting out, maybe we don't have the uh, expendable income to hire a social media manager. And so this is a place that we can go through and we can use chat or AI to help us 
with these ideas, with these prompts. So that's one place that you can use it. With chat 4.0, it's actually now creating images. So for those of you that were asking about mid journey the other day, uh, this is a little bit easier to use than mid journey. Again, that is an AI image generator. It's a little easier to use than mid journey. The images in mid journey, I would say are a bit uh, more detailed, but I really uh, have enjoyed getting to know chat and it's only going to get better with it. This is crazy. Like to think we are in the infancy of this. It's been out for a year and a half. Now think about what the internet was when it was out for a year and a half. And now what it is today. So to be at the infancy of this technology, same with the internet, it has its shadow side, it has its light side. Um, and that we are going to watch this as this continues to grow and who knows where it's going to go and what it's going to become. And one of the things that Colleen and I have talked about with it is that where it started with Reiki and where it is now with Reiki is a really big difference. Every question that you would ask it about Reiki in the beginning would also qualify everything with, but Reiki is not proven, blah, 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 blah. That whole you know, blurb that you can find on Wikipedia. Of course, we know it's a complementary therapy, but there's actually a lot of scientific research on it. Right. And so, but now where it is with Reiki, it's, it's more accepting. And I do believe that all of us that have been using chat to, um, to contribute to those, that part of it, that it does help because while AI chat specifically is somewhat of a learning model, it actually isn't really what it is. It's, it's a very vast and fast database, being able to search a database. So um, it you can definitely prompt it and teach it different things about what you want and your voice. Um, it is a little bit different than just being able to learn like how humans learn. So anyways, back to the image generator, you can see create an image of a person doing self Reiki. Now I put in this photorealistic prompt. That means that it's supposed to look like a person that is maybe of a photo of a person rather than an abstract version of a person. You can see, I mean, you can tell that this one is, uh, you know, more of like a, a computer drawing type thing um, with it. Um, so then if I'm going to click on it, what I can do is I can actually change that and edit it. Um, so I would, I'm down on the right hand side. I would like this person to be sitting outside in nature. So then that's going to recreate my image for me on top of it. And this is something that you can't really do in, in mid journey that you can do here in chat. And I would also resize it. So it's a little bit better for social media, um, is that I can also edit it directly into the photo, right? So, um, here is where I can select and I can highlight something. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to edit my selection. Please remove. So um, this is just a little bit. This just came out. So I'm, I've been playing with it a lot this week. Um, so I'll go back to more of the things that we have been able to do with uh, chat um, from like a, a, an idea standpoint like I did uh, before. But I just wanted to show the image uh, options with with it that it is this is relatively new you can also put images in it and have it be inspired by that image so you can upload it again with chat all of this see how it removed that and mid journey can't really do that so that is one of the things that's really cool about uh this and mid journey will eventually upgrade to do be able to do these things but i would say um chat really came in with some good stuff when it comes to the images so um, there's that aspect. The other thing that you can do with it as far as business, you can say, give me blog ideas, give me newsletter ideas, 
um, help me write something that you are trying to write and it can help you with that. Again, you're going to have to go back and um, make it your own, but there's a lot of things that you can do with that as well. Um, so, you know, let's say there's also, I'm a really direct person and sometimes that can be misconstrued. Um, I'm a direct person in emails and sometimes that can be misconstrued, uh, because context can be hard to, you know, um, be transferred over text. And so if I write a really direct email and I'm like, oh, that's too direct. It sounds kind of rude. I will put my email into here and I will say, can you expand on this a little bit, make it sound nicer um, than, than what it, what I might've originally typed. So that's a really big, um, that's a really good feature of chat. That's helpful for me personally. So um, that is, uh, so those are some of the types of things that you can do for help to help for business. You can also ask it to, I do my own taxes, so, or used to, so you can ask it to help interpret something that you are supposed to, you know, put in one of the lines. So I might say, what does this mean from a ninth grade reading level or something similar to that? so that I can understand it in layman's term because tax code can be so hard to understand. And tax uh, prompts, like, you know, when they're having you fill out your own tax, I'm like, I don't know what that means. Or what are some of the things I've done it when, you know, creating organizations. So creating an LLC. Now it's not going to give you advice on what you should do or shouldn't do, but what it can help you do is help interpret the language or where can I find how to create an LLC? Then some of the creation things that might be a little hard to understand, you can put them into chat and you can ask it to help you to interpret it into a language or um, make it a little bit more layman or human sounding so that you then know exactly what you need to do for that. So that's another place that you can, that chat is really, really helpful as somebody who has ta done taxes in the past for other people. Even I needed to, it was so helpful for my taxes last year, being able to put the different lines in and asking exactly what that meant. Um, and because laws are in different states, are different in different states. If you're doing your st state income tax return, it will tell you, you know, your, your state might have different laws. I can't give you advice on that. If you put in medical stuff, same thing, it's not going to give you any advice. It's going to tell you, you need to talk to your doctor. You need to talk to um, a tax, you know, an accountant, things like that. And actually I really like that because it gives me it gives me a bit of security to know that I don't have to worry that the interpretation is going to be wrong. All I have to do is ask it my um, or that it, any advice would be wrong, but I can just ask it to help me interpret the language so that I can understand it. So th that's another place that it is really helpful. So generating ideas, helping you with emails generating things um, for, you know, helping in your newsletter, then there's going to be, and the other thing that I want to qualify, especially in the way that I did last week too, is that there are people that are way better at this than me. They have a lot more expertise on it. Um, and, um, and one of the things that is the science about AI is really learning how to write the prompts because you can get very detailed on prompts. You can, um, it is a science of getting an answer and then knowing, oh, that's not what I want. One of the things that you can do is, um, you know, uh, like a prompt of you are a high level marketing creator. Please give me ideas or um, how to create my own TikTok videos? What are some of the things that I should be doing to create my own TikTok videos that's going to help with engagement? 
What are some ideas? So it's not creating it for you, but it's helping you to know what to do, how to do that. Um, And if you tell it that it is an expert, it is going to give you a different prompt than just necessarily ideas. So that prompting aspect is really where there's a lot of learning for us around it. Um, It's such a science around it. There is, it can, it can do so many different things. So for an example, as Colleen said, we use it in our personal life right now, chat has this, um, uh, talking aspect where you can talk to it in your app on your phone. If you have chat four O and it answers questions for you. So for example, I was in my garden this weekend, getting my planting done. And, um, I have an area because my, my garden's on a little bit of a slope. I have an area where the soil has eroded a little bit. So it's a bit shallow right there. I'm not doing a lot with my garden this year for a lot of reasons. Um, and, um, the, um, and so, you know, there's some spots there that the, the soil is a little shallower than other spots. So I I'm on there, I'm talking into my phone and I'm like, you know, what are some vegetables that are really good to plant on, um, you know, in, in shallow soil. So it gives me a list of that. And the reason I'm not Googling it is because my hands are super dirty. Cause I like to work in the garden without gloves on for the most part. So my hands are super dirty. And then I'm like, okay, well, I do have the water runs down just a little bit. So what are some vegetables that are in this list that will be able to, you know, do well with that same issue. And so it like cross checks and it, um, uh, you know, lets me know, okay, here's the few that would fit under both of those categories. Also, I found a little, um, cocoon thing. And I was like, what is this? It's a cut worm. I described it to it and it, and I described the cocoon thing. Turns out it's cut worm, which is a pe- pest in the garden. And so it was able to give me that, then also give me some ideas on how to manage that pest. So there is, and then it's a whole thing. And I was like, well, diatomaceous earth, is that going to affect the earthworms? You know? And so there's a whole thing that of conversation that I am having with this, with, with this, that it is helping me so that it's easier than maybe Googling it in that moment. And it's not to say that I don't need to do more research on all of those things. Um, And so there's that aspect to it, but the fact that I can just ask really quickly and able to have it give me answers to it is a really big advantage rather than having to search through a ton of things. So, um, and it's true in, in your business as well, that it can be um, a really helpful tool in your business with ideas, with different things that um, you can use you know, in a, in so many different places, Colleen, I know titles is a really big one. As she said, titles are, they're such a science and they're so hard. Um, and we spend so much time on titling and we even still have so much room for growth on it. I mean, there's people that have that, that's their job is creating titles and effective titling and things like that. Um, And so, and it's such an important aspect to social media, to YouTube, things like that. And AI can really help you with those kinds of things um, for it. Again, that's another place that you're going to have to go through and change some of the titling because it doesn't, it, it's sounds, it sounds so cheesy. (laughs) So um, that, but, you know, you have to go through and work with it but it gives you a starting point for those kinds of things. And it's a really big time saver because really when it comes down to having a Reiki business or any small business, time is the biggest, is I would say the hardest part about it is, is having time to do all the different things that are required of being a small business owner. So if you can hand this off, hand some of those things off to this it is, it can be a little bit like an assistant in a lot of different areas that you may not have time to, for as the, uh, you know, as the business owner. So I just want to do a quick thing that I did the other day in my Corona Reiki class showing everybody. And this is now the chat GPT 4.0 
voice is only in an app on your phone. The 4.0 is on your desktop also, but to use the voice right now is still just on your phone. So I'm just going to give you an example. And if you can see it, all I have to do is hit these little, um, I didn't have to learn this, by the way. All I had to do was hit these little headphones. I am teaching a class in Corona Reiki. Can you give me three questions that I can answer about Corona Reiki? Sure. Here are three questions you can answer about Corona Reiki. One, what are the unique features of Corona Reiki compared to other Reiki systems? Two, how can practitioners integrate Corona Reiki into their existing Reiki practices? Three, what are the specific benefits and applications of using Corona Reiki for personal and client healing? Would you like any more questions or additional details on these? Can you translate those three questions into Portuguese? Claro. Aqui estão as três perguntas traduzidas para o português. Um, quais são as características únicas do Corona Reiki em comparação com outros sistemas de Reiki? Dois, como os praticantes podem integrar o Corona Reiki em suas práticas de Reiki existentes? Três, quais são os benefícios e aplicações específicas de usar o Corona Reiki para cura pessoal e de clientes? So that was just a quick thing. I was at Robin's daughter's, um, at Robin's daughter's baseball game. Oops. <laughs> at Robin's daughter's baseball game, and some of the questions that we had for a podcast the next day. I just on the way home, my husband was driving. It wasn't me driving, but on the way home, asked it for ten questions that I can ask to this particular topic. And so it just rattled them out, just like what you heard. Now, the big piece for me is when you travel to other countries, that voice translation is fairly accurate. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. So one who ha I have always used Google Translate, where you type and text into the topic or into the, the uh, what you want to say, and then it'll spell it out this speaks it. So you can actually use it for, um, for translation. The other thing that it does is it gives you everything that you just talked about in writing as well. So not only did it speak it, it gave it all to me in writing in my regular chat listing, if you're familiar with chat at all. So it's, it's really worth it. Now, personally, I spend time on YouTube learning how to use this. And I just Google or put into YouTube, um, you know, chat GPT beginner or chat GPT. Now I'm looking for chat 4.0 information. And I, ju I just do rabbit holes down YouTube um, and learn a lot of information about it and have particular creators that I know provide really good information about it. So anyway, obviously we can only give you just the introduction to it to, you know, see if it even seems relevant to you. Like I say, I've, I've used it to say, I have this in my refrigerator, give me a recipe for what I have. And it rattles it out. So there are so many reasons I've I've used it for uh, last week because I'm flying to Albany, New York, and uh, what is the best airline to fly from Portland to Albany, New York? And I had done so much search, and then finally it's like, oh yeah, ask Chad, and it gave me the right airline, and so. So many different things. Robin's husband's using it for all kinds of different things, not, you know, totally personally related. So play with it if you feel guided to. It's so simple to learn and um, you can customize it now. There's just so many things you can do with it if you really want to deep dive into it. But also you can just use it at a very basic level for things that benefit you 
um, daily. And then the image generator, I haven't played with at all. There was a question about that and about the artist. I will tell you, one of the ones that I input asking for it to uh, give me uh, an image generated in the style of a particular artist. And it said, no, it doesn't do that. It was a copyright violation. Yeah. And so it it definitely, you know, from what we've seen, it's not, it, it's generated from ideas, but not ever taking a specific artist and using their work. Yeah. Yeah. And copying it. Exactly. Same with, um, from what I know, um, but as Co Colleen said, you know, we're not experts in it. And of course, it as a as any sort of creation that you do, we still, you know, you still are want to stay within ethical boundaries as Colleen and I always do. Um, you know, if we are inspired or something like that by somebody else, we're always going to give credit from as far as I know, it actually isn't capable of taking from people's like original um uh, work, especially with writing, but again, I'm not an expert in it. And of course, you know, things need to be flushed out as far as the ethics are concerned with it, just as all new technology and the internet and, and things like that. And so we hope by contributing the frequencies of Reiki into it, that that is something that is, um, that is something that, of course, is taken into consideration and is a part of the system. From the tech people that I've I've listened to around it, they are also concerned about that um, and those kinds of uses of it. Um, but again, you know, I'm I'm not an expert in that, and we hope that that is uh, a part of a part of all of it. But from the perspective of helping you in your small business, it is a very very helpful um, and can take a lot off your plate for those things. And just to, uh, we had multiple people ask what that app was that you were talking into, Colleen, that is just the chat GPT app, but you do have to have 4.0 for that capability, which is paid. There are also free versions of chat. You're just, um, how much you can do on it is a little more limited. And it's called chat GPT or chat or open AI is another word that people will use for the same thing. So you can just go into the app store and download it. And it's only on your phone, although uh, ChatGPT is on your desktop as well. It just doesn't have the voice capability at this point. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things um, when I like the way that you said it, just like a computer, use it as an assistant, but not always the sharpest tool in the box. So you definitely have to check your work. You, you definitely want to be authentic with it. And, you know, that's the main thing with it is just being authentic, but it has really been helpful. And then some of the other ones that are out there, uh, like Claude and Bing and some of those Gemini, they will also give you actually the websites that they get the information from. And um, then you can research it that way too. Yeah. If there's something specific, they, there are other ones out there that correctly cite the sources. Bing is one of the big ones that does that. Um, and that is a part of what they do. It's part of their mission for that is that you have that tool to be able to cite sources. And uh, yeah, somebody else said, I, I use it for everything, help to correct texts. Big one that I'll put in. Can you write this grammatically correct? <laughs> so right. that's a big I, I fix emails with it. It's totally. like, I say what I want to say and then say, can you, can you fix this? So yeah, ideas for new courses and books and content for my classes, social media, et cetera. So yeah, it can be really helpful.